All right, we are here for the final round of our event, and uh, we have a, a keepable hand, which is a miracle. I'm uh, gonna go ahead and keep this. Our hand, you know, both colors of mana, reasonable distribution of stuff. I mean, really, the the, hand, the only hand that we mulliganed that wasn't just like you know one color of mana or no land, or, you know, was the double mana confluence hand uh, in the match against Mono Blue. So it's not like we were you know doing a bunch of strategic mulliganing that sort of uh, cost us. All right, so opponent is blue white. So uh, the draw here is kind of annoying. Uh, being in the play is pretty whoa font of fortunes. All right, not what I was anticipating seeing, but all right. Uh, so we're gonna open with a lion regardless, and uh, yeah, <laughs> font of fortunes. Not all right. I mean, I guess I guess font of fortunes is sort of like a divination that you split up over over turns and you use your second turn to deploy instead of your third turn, or instead of your uh, uh, instead of your yeah instead of your third turn. So here. Um, I have a couple of options. Uh, I can play Smiter. I can just attack him, uh, and you know, that's it. Uh, I can play Smiter. You know, I can play uh, Smiter and and uh, attack with this. I can, you know, I'm obviously attacking. Maybe he has his Aureus Charm, but whatever. The question is whether I play Ajani first, um, or whether I play Smiter, or whether I leave open mana first, Legion Charm. These are all options that I have right now. My inclination is that. Uh, I want to attack and uh, just play a smiter. Like the fact that he has two mana open means that if he plays like an Azorius Charm after I commit to Ajani, it's pretty bad for me. Uh, if he has Supreme Verdict, then you know he Supreme Verdicts my guys, and you know I go on with my life. Um, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and attack with Lion, and play Smiter. If he verdicts me, I can still just play another Smiter. Um, optimally, you know what you want to what you want to have here is just the Boon Seder. So you just attack and say go. And yeah, we're gonna get verdict. Looks like no Jace. All right, that's actually great. So he played Jace, and now we get to play a Johnny. And I can kill Jace if I want, or just attack him. I think I probably want to kill Jace here because he's at seventeen still. So. I can do four, five, six, yeah. So I can plus Jace, or plus Ajani on Lion. Because Lion can threaten to go ultimate. Go monstrous, that is. So he didn't he didn't uh, cast Supreme Verdict, so that suggests he doesn't have one. So killing Jace is a... Uh, you know, much more appealing than just hitting him for damage and letting him use Jace. So we're gonna say go. And even if he verdicts us here, we still have a Johnny in play. And if he doesn't, we get to potentially. Oh, looks like he. Oh no, he's just casting a Jace. Oh wow. All right. Well, we are going to monstrous our lion. First things first, because getting this guy monstrous is very important. And then, there's nothing you can do for one white mana. Then we can just put a plus one plus one counter on this, and attack Jace with just this, and then attack him with this. So Jace is gonna die again, and we've got him to 14, and we have an indestructible lion. So, uh, I mean, he could play Elspeth and plus, but we have, I mean, he's basically pretty close to dead. I have this just in play. I mean, keep Planar cleansing me, and he can play Elspeth, okay, he's actually dead. Because we just uh, Boon Seder or Silesian Charm this. Here. Bestow this on him and hit him for 20. I will attack you for 20. That is my plan. Twenty. What are you at? Not twenty. Okay, you're dead. <laughs> Attack you. I mean, he was dead to just the Selesnya charm, also. Alright, so cyberting. Uh, cyberting here. I just like bringing in the Azani's presence. 
and uh, do, 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 do. I'm not a huge fan of of having. Uh, oh, actually, we didn't see. We didn't actually get a chance to see whether he was playing a uh, a version that has planar cleansing or the spheres. Uh, but back to nature is great against the sphere versions. Uh, the worst cards here are actually just smiters. Smiters, you just play them into wraths, and they are just not not impressive. You know that game smiter was great because you just didn't have a wrath. But if he just had wrath there, smiter was just so bad. Whereas if I had you know any other creature and a Johnny's presence, you know I can I can use a Johnny's presence to keep my creature alive from wrath, and. Uh, you know, just keep my pressure on. So, I'm going to board in the one Back to Nature and the three Ajani's Presence, take out the four Loxodon Smiters. Uh, Ajani Mentor of Heroes is okay. This is less less of a attrition type matchup. Mono Black is more of an attrition matchup where you're just sort of trading card for card, card for card, and eventually, you know, one person has slightly more resources or one person is unable to deal with the sort of assault the other person is uh, putting them under. Whereas against Blue White, they have Haymakers. They're not like an attrition deck, they are a Sphinx's Revelation, they're an Elspeth deck. Uh, that makes a card like Ajani much less impressive in that matchup, whereas you know it may seem like oh it's a you know it's it's great against control type decks. It's not the same against uh, decks that are you know using Revelation or using uh, Verdict and Elspeth to close the game out. So we're gonna go ahead and submit. Uh, and this this hand is fine. Uh, it's not great. We don't actually have a planes for our Sunblade Elf, but we do have Experiment One into Soldier Sunblade. So we're going to go ahead and keep. Uh, we also have voice. It could just be experiment one into voice, which may be better. So he has a basic planes turn one. Um, we're going to leave with experiment one at F8. Basic planes into Mutavault. All right, well, we drew basic planes. I'm kind of tempted to just play Voice here because he can't uh, he can't possibly counter it, and Voice is just so powerful in this matchup. Uh, assuming he's a sort of he's a sort of deck that that I, th I think he is. Um, so I can also just play two creatures, which is also super powerful. I think the two creatures might be better, um, just because you know we're we're putting a lot of pressure on him right now. He it seems to be having some sort of mana troubles, so I think that just getting you know a faster clock it also allows us to potentially just you know, have Ajani's presence open. Are we getting last breath? Is last breathing the soldier? Okay. All right. Well, now I'm actually kind of pretty glad that I didn't play voice because it would have just gotten last breath. Though actually, you know, he wouldn't couldn't last breath my my voice because it would have given me a token. But regardless, all right. So Ratchet bomb. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm gonna attack him. And I think I just want to banishing light his ratchet bomb, given that he doesn't have any land, and I have two, uh, two one cost guys. I could also just play voice. If I play voice here and then just Ajani's presence his ratchet bomb, that that may be better even, because then I just have a voice in play as well, and I still have a banishing light in my hand. The banishing like. He's not going to be able to play anything over the next few turns that, that I'm going to really want to Banishing Light, given that he's having mana troubles, so I'm just going to Banishing Light that. And yeah, it looks like he just kept a not really functional hand here. He kept seven, too, I think. All right. Well, we're just going to attack. I'm just going to play one voice and not both voices, just in case he has a uh, detention sphere. I don't want to give, give him max value out of it. All right. Well, now I have Sunblade Elf is on. And even if he verdicts, an Azorius charm. Oh, he's. What's he doing? He is charming my voice. Okay. 
my voice is charmed. And I will hit you for five. Shiro is digging on my carpet behind me. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> He's digging a hole, I think. All right, so uh, here, so if he has verdict, now I can just play my voice and just use Ajani's presence to save my elemental, and he'll die anyway. So he's basically dead. We have four different things, so the Hengen Sphere doesn't really do very much, and uh, yeah, looks like he, yeah, he just doesn't have anything. I'm just gonna play another voice, just. In case, you know, for value. It also makes my elemental bigger. And he is dead. So that game wasn't super interesting. Um, the first game, I think, definitely showcased how powerful the, uh, the threats in the deck can be. Uh, if your opponent doesn't have a way to deal with them right away. You know, we were basically in a position where it's like, okay, well, you have to have Supreme Verdict this turn. And he didn't. And he just wasn't able to really do anything with his Jace. I think that uh, probably our opponent would have been better off uh, minusing Jace rather than plussing it. So, you know, he was, it was just dying and saving him life, and he didn't really have the tools to stay alive. Um, and, you know, we were able to get our Lion online, and once you actually get a Lion online with Johnny, it's basically game over. Um, and this game, you know, our opponent just stumbled a little bit, you know, didn't have the, uh, the mana he needed early, and we were able to just run over him. And that's always a strength of an aggressive deck that you are really able to punish any sort of uh, any sort of misstep that your opponent has in the early turns of the game. So uh, anyway, you know, we, we didn't have the best showing. We only went two and two in the daily event. Uh, I do think that the, you know, we, we lost one match where we played a game. You know, we mulliganed a four in one of them and, uh, you know, kept a six, uh, a six carter and didn't, didn't draw a land we needed in the other. And then the, you know, against mono black, we had a close game in game two. You know, it might not have you know, been super close at the end, but it was definitely a game in which uh, one of our draw steps had gone differently. I think that it could have gone differently, and then, you know, we double mulligan in the first game. So, uh, overall, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I mean, I, I still think the deck is great. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, things didn't really go exactly how I would have liked in some of those matches, but I do think that we were able to demonstrate the way in which this deck is powerful uh, in some of these matchups and how some of the specific cards um, are very powerful as well. You know, things like the Cetison tactics against the uh, against the blue decks. And, uh, I mean, as Johnny's presence here gave us incredible, uh, incredible insurance against our opponent actually having a Supreme Verdict, uh, I mean, we also had Double Voice, which was great against that as well. So, you know, I think that, you know, there's definitely some, some exploration to be done to see, you know, if there are better cyber options, I think against Mono Black. That's one matchup where I'm not super happy with the swap to Johnny's presence. I think God Willing is... God's Willing? God Willing. Uh, is a much better card overall in that matchup, but I don't think it's a great card, and I think there's uh, there's definitely possibility for improvement. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.